Now let me go ahead and state for the record, if you aren't clear, I'm down with Sting winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship from Seth Rollins at Night of Champions. Frankly, that's what I want to happen. It's what I think should happen. But I know there's going to be a large segment of the audience that doesn't agree with that for a wide variety of reasons. And there are a lot of reasons to look at Sting winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and say, <laughs> So, with that said, to make sure that in the interest of fairness, I am representing all viewpoints on this channel and not just my own, which is the one that matters to me the most and should be the most important to you, let me go ahead and tell you why Sting winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship maybe isn't a good idea at all. And maybe it would be a mistake and it would be stupid. In fact, what the hell? I've got 15 reasons Sting winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship is stupid. Are you ready? Nice. Ah, oh, forget it. Let's go ahead and get started. Number 15. It's not 1997 anymore. I'm tired of the WWE always having to bring back the old acts. And the simple fact of the matter is we're not talking about a late 30 Sting, early 40 Sting, a guy at the height of his powers, at the peak of his career and his physical abilities. This is a mid 50 Sting that's still coming out in the black and white face paint that again was relevant in 1997. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's tired of the WWE always having to go back to the old acts because they can't make anything good out of the new acts. Number 14. Does Sting even really fit as a champion in today's PG WWE? Is Sting somebody you're really going to send out there with your title to do all of the mainstream media? Is he going to be the one that you really want as the face representing the company during his time as a champion? I, I don't know if that's the case, and I don't know if he really fits. It kind of would be, to me, a bit of a situation of a square peg in a round hole here in this point in time. 15 years ago, terrific, fine, but again, it's not 1997 anymore. So I really wonder if Sting actually even fits as their world champion. Number 13, would the story of Sting chasing Seth Rollins for the title be repetitive? You can already see the writing on the wall where a lot of what Sting is going to do in his pursuit of Seth Rollins in the belt is going to be similar to what he did when he was chasing Triple H going into their match at WrestleMania, just like Sting used to do so many times back in the 90s. We really need to see that anymore at this day and age. And furthermore, would that story really resonate? Would it really gravitate uh, the people towards it? Would it suck people in? Or would it just feel kind of like the same old crap? And in a lot of ways, I think it could very well end up feeling like the same old crap. Number 12, what happened to the U.S. title now? We go from John Cena versus Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. We have Cena drop the strap to Seth Rollins. And now we've got Sting coming after the world title. It's basically F the U.S. title. Why sit there and put that U.S. title on Cena for all those months from WrestleMania until SummerSlam? Do all that stuff with Cena and that U.S. championship just to sit there and basically completely and totally discard it. I mean, I'm not going to say that will be guaranteed what they do, but the way it's being presented, it most certainly seems like it's like it's going to be discarded, like it will be second fiddle. And it's really odd. Cena was talking so much about how that was the top belt since he was the one that had it. No, now because Seth Rollins has it, it doesn't fucking matter anymore. It's just like every other mid-card title in the WWE. I don't get it. Number 11, Seth Rollins losing to a part-timer. You know, it's bad enough, again, that we have to keep going back to the 90s and the 2000s in 2015 in order to try and grab onto things and latch onto things and throw them against the wall and hope they stick and hope that the fans buy into it and the fans accept it. You know, why does Seth Rollins have to lose to a part-timer? Furthermore, how bad does it make your roster look every time one of these guys that only wrestles a couple of times a year, no matter how big of a name, can come through and beat the guy that sits there and does it every single night? I would compare it to, let's say, on the PGA Tour. You've got somebody like a Jordan Spieth sitting there every day, and he's just bam, 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 an occasional hiccup here, but, you know, this is a dude that won two majors, finished second in another one, and tied for fourth in another one this year. And then all of a sudden, let's say Tiger Woods had taken five years off. 
And all of a sudden, he comes back in next year at the Masters, and he destroys Jordan Spieth by eight strokes. That makes absolutely no fucking sense, and in no way, shape, or form seems believable at all, no matter how frustrating, humbling a game golf can actually be. So how stupid does it look? Same thing with the NFL. Does somebody sit there and spend two years on the injury report, and then all of a sudden, they come back, and they are the exact same player, and they're better than everybody else in the damn game? No. So how stupid does it look to have Seth Rollins sit there and lose to a part-timer. What does it say about the state of the current roster and the company's confidence in the current roster if this is yet another full-timer putting over yet another part-timer? And I mean, number 10, if you were going to have Seth Rollins put over a part-timer, why not just have him wrestle Brock Lesnar again? There's money there for another match. Why not just have it be Brock Lesnar? Here's the guy that actually will get the ESPN coverage. This is the guy that will get a lot of mainstream media exposure. Here's a guy that has crossed over from his time as well in the UFC. Here's a guy that will work more than Sting. Here's a guy that is the top baby face that you have in the company currently. If you're going to have Seth Rollins lose to a part-timer, I guess my point is, why not just have it be to Brock Lesnar? Number nine, some of you might argue that other guys deserve the spot. And while I'm not sure I fully necessarily agree with that or not, you know, I will say this, is that we're begging for something different. We want something different. While Sting is different, is it necessarily the right type of different? I mean, maybe some of you guys want a Cesaro to get that shot at Rollins, or a Kevin Owens to get that shot. Maybe some of you want a Roman Reigns or a Ryback to get that shot. These are all stories that haven't been done on Raw. These are all things that haven't been done yet at the WWE main roster level. Why can't we do those? Why do we have to sit there and just throw all of them off to the side as second-tier importance for the sake of somebody like a Sting? And number seven, it seems like in particular that Night of Champions would be a dumb time to do it. I mean, if Sting is going to wrestle a match, and in particular for the world title, then why the hell didn't he just do it at SummerSlam? Why the hell did you do Cena versus Seth Rollins at SummerSlam? Wouldn't you think that having Sting versus Seth Rollins at SummerSlam would make more sense if you were just going to do it the next month at Night of Champions anyways? Why are you giving away a big-time feature attraction like Sting and a big-time feature match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship as a main event on a second-tier pay-per-view? Well, yes, I understand the WWE treats Night of Champions as an important show, and they needed something for Night of Champions after SummerSlam. The fact is, you were trying to create an environment where SummerSlam was your WrestleMania of the summer. As a result, wouldn't it make sense to have the guy who was in one of the featured programs heading into WrestleMania 31 sting beyond the SummerSlam 2015 card? And if you're going to do this, then why not just do it at Survivor Series? Why not try to build up that late fall pay-per-view, one of your traditional big fours? I don't get it. And then number seven, this match could be doo-doo. I've always felt that Sting works best when he has a veteran like a Triple H, I don't know, maybe someday like an Undertaker, a Kurt Angle, or so on and so forth, a real established veteran that knows what the hell he's doing, that can walk Sting through the match, that can piece it together, put the story together, and just put Sting in positions to shine and be able to direct and guide Sting. Sting's never been great at calling a match. Sting is notorious for forgetting spots. Now, basically, you're going to put him in a position where you've got Seth Rollins calling the match. You've got Seth Rollins calling the show. That's a lot of pressure to put on a Seth Rollins, and there's no guarantee with the type of style that a Seth Rollins works that his chemistry in the ring with Sting is going to work. It's not going to say instantly that this will guarantee be a boo-boo, doo-doo match, but this could very well be boo-boo and doo-doo. And perhaps the whole pop of Sting winning the title you think would be enough but you need more out of a main event of a pay-per-view like Night of Champions than just that. The match can't suck. And there's a very good chance, based off of their styles and how Seth Rollins works versus how Sting works, and who would need to lead it and why, that that match could really be an epic disappointment. And I don't want to see that happen. And then number six, what if you have Sting beat Seth Rollins just so that way John Cena can come through and beat the old veteran, the icon, and then he ties Ric Flair, skip the skip and whoop the fucking do Oh, I'm sure a lot of us would absolutely love that. That is one thing I guaranteed would not want to fucking see. Sting to win the title just so he can lose it to John Cena. Or even worse, just think about it this way. What happens if they didn't go in that direction? 
But they had Sheamus cash in on Sting either that same night at Night of Champions or the night after or the next month or two months later. If you're giving the belt to Sting just so that way you can have Sheamus cash in, give me a fucking break. I will pass. And then here's the thing, number four. I mean, let's not forget about this. I'm very big on continuity. I'm very big on the nitpicking, if you will, because sometimes I feel it's very inappropriate. Because things do have to make sense, e even if it's in a wrestling context. Let me get this straight. When Sting is revealed under the curtain on Raw, the guy who beat him at WrestleMania in Triple H now doesn't want anything to do with him. Now he's scared of him. And now Sting is supposed to be able to just show up under the curtain when it's pulled up, hit Rollins a couple times, and that gets him a fucking world title shot. He couldn't even beat Triple H at WrestleMania with help. Now he's going to sit there and legitimately beat Seth Rollins? Why would somebody who's lost the only WWE match he's ever had against somebody like a Triple H sit there and be given a world title match and Night of Champions against Seth Rollins? That makes absolutely no fucking sense. It's like when you see the authority do all this shit just to sit there and pretend like they don't want Roman Reigns or a John Cena, let's say, in a title match, and then they just fucking put him in there anyways. Why the hell would you do that? There's no continuity there. That absolutely makes no fucking sense, even in a wrestling sense. And then speaking of Triple H, number three, while there's story there for Sting and Seth Rollins and Sting and the Authority, I get that. I think there's even more story there with Seth Rollins and Triple H. If you were going to have a part-timer or a legend or a veteran or a Hall of Famer beat Seth Rollins, then why not just have him beat Triple H? Why not just do that? You could use that as a path to a Seth Rollins babyface turn or if you wanted to turn Triple H babyface. I mean, you've got so much there. You've got over a year worth of history, a year and a half worth of history damn near, with Seth Rollins and Triple H to the point where now Seth Rollins is using Triple H's finisher, the pedigree. If he's going to lose to a part-timer, then why not have him lose to one of the most important people in the entire company in Triple H? A guy that you know you could count on, that you could depend on, a guy that's going to be there, a guy that's not going to go anywhere, and a guy that you know, especially if he's got the title, praise God, he's going to put his full effort and best foot forward to make himself look good and make that other person look good. So that way, ha ha ha, hashtag breakfast club rules, bitches. He's going to make sure that he looks even better. Praise God. But seriously, if Rollins is going to lose to a part-timer, why not just have a B Triple H? I think there's more mileage there, there's more matches there, and there's more intrigue and story there. Just what I'm saying. Uh, number two, you have Taker Russell at SummerSlam against Brock Lesnar in the main event. So Taker wrestles SummerSlam for the first time in seven years. Clearly, Sting was ready to wrestle at SummerSlam. If you bring him back on the Raw after SummerSlam, and you're going to have him wrestle for the title at Night of Champions, you've got these two mother humpers under contract at the same time. They're working matches in the same time period. If you wanted to create an environment where you said, we want to make SummerSlam the WrestleMania of the summer, knowing part of what makes some WrestleMania work, and sometimes what would make SummerSlam really work, is you have that one-on-one -on -one featured attraction between two legends, two greats. You know, you'll think of something, for some of you, you might point to SummerSlam 2005 and Hulk Hogan versus Shawn Michaels. Okay, bam, that's one to get the job fucking done. You know, WrestleMania 28, The Rock versus John Cena. It doesn't even have to be for the title. The Rock versus Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 18. Yes, WWE, that match still fucking happened. You got both of these guys under contract at the same time, in the same company, at the same place. You've been waiting all these years for it. If you don't want to do it at WrestleMania, that's fine. Then just do it at fucking SummerSlam. If you want to use Sting so bad and you want to use Taker so bad, why not really give us something to talk about at SummerSlam and give us Sting versus The Undertaker? You want to talk about a match that's too big for WrestleMania? There you fucking go. But number one, perhaps the biggest stupid reason for Sting to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, we talk about the hypocrisy of the view of fans when it comes to Sting's time in TNA versus WWE and what TNA does versus what the WWE does. And let's face it, Sting was a multiple-time TNA World Champion. And it's not exactly like he did a whole lot of good with it. It's not exactly like he helped really grow the company. It's not exactly like he put a ton of asses in the seats or a largely increasing number of eyeballs in front of the televisions. So 
it wasn't a particularly great drawing world champion with this company that pounded him and consistently kept him around and put him in that top spot. Why the hell would he be some great massive draw for WWE when he's barely there? And when you look even at the ratings for the Raw after SummerSlam, this is a follow-up show, a blow-off show. You would have thought the ratings would be better than they actually were, especially when you consider the spot fest that it kind of was, similar to a WrestleMania in terms of, bam, here's the Dudley Boys, bam, a new member of the Wyatt family, bam, here's motherfucking Sting. And it just didn't work. And furthermore, from a fan standpoint, you know, while the WWE's featuring of Sting is different than TNA's featuring of Sting, and that's a key distinction to make, it's still at the end of the day, we knocked TNA for all these years pushing these 40 and 50 and in some cases 60-year-old motherfuckers at the expense of the 20s and 30s guys. WWE is doing the same damn thing. They would rather push a Sting in his mid-50s than a Seth Rollins in his late 20s. They would rather give a Sting the title in his late 50s than a Roman Reigns in his late 20s, or a Dean Ambrose in his late 20s, or a Ryback in his early 30s. Why the fuck would that be okay in the WWE, but we shit on it in TNA? Again, I understand the difference between how these guys were, how they was featured between the different companies and how he's featured now, but Jesus Christ. You know, I understand sometimes what the TNA fans are saying when they sit there and say, oh, but when he did it in TNA, it was stupid, right? Yes, there's something different about being in WWE. And yes, they feature somebody like Sting differently than they do in TNA. But part of that point is very valid and it's very true. We know damn good and well that if Sting appeared this Wednesday on Impact, on Destination America, to try and save their fucking television deal, and he won that damn world title, people will be taking to social media and the interwebs, at least some of them, if they gave a fuck, and they'd be knocking TNA. They'd be shitting all over TNA. They'd be destroying TNA. They'd be talking about, this is what this stupid company does, and this is what this stupid company fucking deserves. And all that would be true. So why is it so different now with the WWE? I don't know. Those are just my thoughts. Those are 15 reasons Sting winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship is stupid. And I understand if you're in the camp and on the side of some or all of these viewpoints. Because there's a lot of validity to a lot of them. And ultimately, I'm really not going to knock you if you believe any of that. Or you hold to any of that. Or you think any of that is true. And that, in part, is why you're not down with Sting winning the title. Because, again, I understand it. I get it. But it doesn't mean I agree with you. Because I most certainly do not. Now that I have given you 15 reasons why it would be stupid for Sting to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, my next video will be me giving you 15 reasons why Sting should win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship.